Welcome to Women in the Know, where we discuss everything from politics and policy to relationships and marketing. We discuss franchise growth and marketing difficulties and try to learn something that we can impart to you um, through our interviews with women in business and women in franchising. So today's topic is kind of a fun one, and it relates to our interview with Jane Plitt, and, and, and it's about the importance of knowing our histories. And that doesn't just mean world history, American history, your state history. They always teach that in school. Every state has a week, I think, in the fourth grade where you learn Florida history is what I learned. My kids learned Alabama history. Um, but our history as women and why that is, is something that we should all engage with and learn more about. It's so important uh, to pay attention to where we come from and how far we've come. And Jane Plitt kind of addressed that in, when she was talking about her book, uh, which was research on Martha Matilda Harper and how Martha Matilda Harper's history got lost. It got lost in, uh, primarily because she was a, a woman during a time when men did all the business and had rented places and built empires and you know she couldn't get loans and all of those things so learning about Martha Matilda's uh, history kind of opens your eyes to what women before us have done to make our lives a little bit easier in the 21st uh, century but it's so easy to kind of get caught up in the present and I'm one of those people personally that I'm always in the future. I'm, I'm like 10 years out and the world is going to be this way and my business is going to be that way and my life is going to be mm -hmm. the other way. I, I'm never looking back, but to your point, it's so important for us to look back once in a while to generations before us and, and things they've accomplished and things that they have overcome. Well, it is. And, and, you know, part of the story of Martha Matilda is that she was have she had a hard time getting a lease for a location. Mm -hmm. Um, and so people today, young women, especially coming up, don't relate to that. <laughs> I don't even relate to not having a, being able to get a lease or a credit card, but uh, my children certainly can't relate to that. And I think without knowing that, that, you know, sometimes you get stuck in this rut, like things are bad or things could, you know, mm -hmm. be better. And you don't realize how far the progress has come and you don't realize how hard the women before us had to work for that progress. Yeah. I mean, think about some of our best authors years ago, Wuthering Heights written by one of the Brunt girls, uh, Brunty girls, uh, who wrote under a pen name because she knew she would not be published if she published under her own name. And then when she finally met her publisher, he was shocked that it was a woman because everything was done through them through the mail so and of course um uh, um ruth bader ginsburg and things that she accomplished uh in her life if we're not paying attention to these things a we're not grateful because we just take things for granted and b we're not really learning from it so we don't make similar mistakes in the future to take us back when, rather than moving forward as a, as a race, right? As a, as a human race, we all need to move forward and, and continue to evolve and grow and learn. And, uh, and these women before us and our history should set the pace for just that. Absolutely. And I think when you, when you realize how many things women have done that they were not credited for, um, Jane Plitt talked about the cotton gin was credited to Eli Whitney, mm -hmm. but a woman had a lot to do with that. And there are multiple stories in history where that has occurred. And, you know, I, I knew a decent amount about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but there were specifics that I didn't realize. And I was less aware that she was one who fought for women to be able to have credit mm -hmm. and fought for women to be able to get a mortgage and own, th you know, own things in their own names. And I read recently, here was one I really didn't know anything about. She fought for a woman in the military who yes. got pregnant. Did you see that? I did. And she was going to, she either had to have an abortion or uh, get out of the military. military. Mm -hmm. And she took on that case and had, that helped propel women in business not to have to make that choice so that they could both be parent, a mother and have a career. And that was a, a pretty big limiting factor. It was legal to fire women when they were pregnant or because they had young children at home. So I didn't realize how instrumental she was in that specifically, but, and I think it's critically important to understand that. And I think we still have some progress that can be made in terms of 
um, family leave and, and maternity leave and paternity leave and things like that, that could be better in terms of helping people get support during those times. But if we don't know where it had started, we wouldn't know where to go or we would make the same right. mistakes over and over again. So uh, when, when RBG died, I went back and watched the documentary because I had not ever took, taken yeah, I saw it a couple years it. ago. And uh, it was, it was so good and informative and it was, it's just about the strength of a woman and it's inspiring, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for someone to have been the only female in her law school class and the things that she had to encounter. Okay. Um, it's, it's really a great story. And I, and I think that's why I, we get excited about Jane Plitt talking about Martha Matilda, because mm -hmm. if she hadn't done all that work, she spent a decade or more, maybe it was two decades, researching and researching and digging and digging. And it took effort. It didn't just fall into her lap to yeah. find the story of this woman who was instrumental in, in changing franchising. So I think that's, it's fun if you, if you humanize mm -hmm. these stories, you know. It, it is fun. So I think it's important for all of us as women to look at the lives and the struggles and the obstacles and the learning that generations before us have, including our own parents, grandparents, great grandparents, uh, because that, that DNA gets passed, right? Those belief systems, those values get passed from generation uh, to generation. Um, so it's good to know your own personal history as well as, as your, the society you're in and the industry you're in and what's going on uh, that makes who we are today. Um, I looked at my personal history uh, some time back and um, I look at some of the patterns that are repeating mm -hmm. in uh, the, the women in my life, you know, some patterns that are going five generations, good ones, as well as not so good ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of which I say the buck stops here, this pattern is not continuing. Any <laughs> and others that I'm proud of that, you know, my great grandmother, you know, was a landlord in a time when it was impossible to be a landlord as a woman, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and had a business and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this was in 1880, 1890, 1900, you know, destroying barriers and, mm -hmm. and so, a trailblazer. So you trailblazer. come from good stock. <laughs> I come from good stock. <laughs> uh, okay, ladies, gentlemen, know your history. That's right. Lesson for the day. Lesson That's for the day. One. Know yeah. your history, appreciate your history, learn from your history, change it if necessary into the future, but you know, at least know where you come from. Uh, for now, uh, we're going to close out this uh, session of Women in the Know, and we'll see you next week on another Women in the Know. Mm -hmm.